Hello everybody, welcome to ZepTest webinar. My name is Sergey. On today's webinar we will cover ZepFarm. We will review how to install and configure ZepFarm server, how to install device gateway, how to connect mobile devices, and how to make integration of ZepFarm with ZepTest. Before I start, as usual, I will ask all participants to remain silent. Please mute your audio lines. If you have any questions, please use WebEx chat. Address your questions directly to me, who is a host or presenter. Our webinar will consist of three parts. At the beginning, I will make brief introduction of ZepTest as a product and a company. Then we will have main technical part of the webinar. And at the end, I will allocate some time for Q&A session. Okay, a few words about ZepTest. As a company, we've been in the business over 20 years. We position ourselves as a full-stack cross-platform testing solution. With ZepTest, you can automate applications on mobile, Windows, Mac, Linux platforms, and we fully support Agile development methodology. We are based in Atlanta, Georgia. Our core technology is OneScript, which allows us to script test procedure once and execute it anywhere. We are the test optimization leaders, which means that with ZepTest you can automate any application, you can meet any development schedule, and you can accommodate any skill set of your team members. As a full stack technology, we provide end user test automation cross platform fashion. This means that you can create your test script on one platform or environment and play it as is anywhere else. Besides that, we offer other technologies which are not commonly offered in the industry. For example, with ZTest you can auto-generate test documentation. This may offset a lot of man hours of writing documentation manually. ZTest can do it for you. We also have technology for parallel device execution. The MRUN ensures just-in-time regression testing. With MRUN, you can connect to multiple devices with different platforms or different browsers and execute same tests simultaneously on all of them. We also have device host management private cloud system, which we provide to ZepTest users. The farm offers test device management capability and provides universal access to the devices across organization for the purpose of mobile application deployment manual testing, automated testing, and parallel test execution. With ZepTest today, you can do API or web services testing. You can use the tool for an API standalone test automation or for building combined API and UI testing framework. Recently, ZepTest released the load component, which enables our users to do API performance testing in the continuation of their quality assurance process. As you can see, today's ZTest can be used as a one-stop solution for majority of quality assurance needs. Now I will move on to the webinar presentation. Uh, first, I will cover installation of ZepFarm. You can download ZepFarm uh, installation package from our website. For this, after logging into your account, you can go to the downloads page. And here you can find ZepFarm server. I already have it downloaded to save time of the webinar and I will proceed with installation. I'm going to run the installation package uh, as administ with administrative privilege.
Once the Zep farm install is complete, I can start Zep farm. When I click finish button, it will start Zep farm automatically. I have uh, the option selected on the final screen. Once the Zep farm started, it will show the screen, this dialog. To start the server, I need to press start server button. When the Zep Farm server is up and running, it shows link to open Zep Farm interface on the web browser. Also, I have another button to uh, stop the server. I'm going to use this link to navigate to the login page of the uh, Zep Farm. Zep Farm is a web-based application. It provides access to its interface through the web. I'm using my local machine to install Zep Farm. You can use dedicated server as alternative way to install it. To log in for the first time, we need to provide default user ID and password. Those can be found on the downloads page. If I go to the Zep Farm server the link, I can find default user account under the description. So this is what I need to use as the user ID and this is the password. After successful sign in, Zep Farm homepage appears where I can see devices, gateways, and links for administrative tasks. This link and button advises me to change uh, administrator's password. This is a good thing to do to prevent unauthorized access to the Zep Farm administrative account. Also, there is a link to learn more about how to download Gateway, connect mobile devices. So this way you can start using the Zep Farm. So you can go over these slides and description and play the video how to continue with the Zep Farm. Many links include administration. Here I can find page where we can manage users. Right now, only one user included on this page, which is a default admin account. We can add additional users. If we go to this dialog, you can provide user information, define password and user roles. This menu opens devices list. Upon adding devices, devices will appear on the device list and can be managed on this page. Next menu item navigates to the gateways page. All the gateways that will be associated with this Zep Farm instance will appear with their statuses and other information. This menu links shows list of generators. Generators are remote generators devices that can be used as part of a load testing through Zep, Zep test. Once you configure a remote generator and associate it with the Zep Farm instance, it will appear in the list of generators here and also can be selected from the generators list box on the load module. The tools menu item includes download link for device gateway and you can use iOS certificates page to add iOS certificates that can be used for package installment on iOS devices. Each user will have manage account page where you can update your account information. Also, you can see statistics and license information. Right now, I'm using free Zep Farm license which includes two devices, two gateways, two connections, 
and also shows me total devices gateways that have been connected so far. Bottom part can be used to change password of the user. Okay, next will be installing device gateway. We need device gateway in order to connect mobile devices. Gateway serves as a bridge between mobile devices, which uh, connects using USB. And by means of gateway, users of Zep Farm can access endpoint mobile devices. We can get gateway installation package by going to the tools menu. You can press this button, which will navigate you to the ZepTest website, device gateway related page. From here, you can press this button to download installation package. I already have it downloaded to save time of the webinar and I will proceed with the installation. This is the latest device gateway package. I'm going to run it as administrator. To install the device gateway, I'm using the same computer which I use for, for the Zep farm. Alternatively, you can install Zep device gateway on a separate machine. Idea is that this software should be installed on that location where you have your mobile devices. If there are multiple locations where mobile devices are, you can install multiple instances of the device gateway. All of them should be registered with the same Zep Farm server. All right, my installation process of the device gateway is complete. I will press the finish button to launch the device gateway. In my case, the device gateway launched and started automatically because I have it previously installed on my computer and it remembers settings of my local instance of the Zep farm. In your case, when you have a fresh installation, the device gateway will open configuration dialog, which looks like this. So here you will need to provide Zep farm address, username and password. This information is required for, for the device gateway to properly connect to the Zep farm. After providing this information and closing the configuration dialog, you will need to press the start button. The device gateway will provide log and after successfully registering itself with the Zep farm, it has started status. Again, to stop the device gateway, you can press this stop button. All right, now I have device gateway uh, installed and started. Next thing for me is uh, connecting uh, mobile devices. I'm going to start with connecting an Android phone. The mobile devices should be connected to that computer where you have device gateway installed, not where you have Zep Farm installed. If you have different machines for Zep Farm and device gateway, the device gateway should be used to connect mobile devices. For Android device to be connected in use uh, with Zep Farm, you will need proper USB driver installed on the computer where you have to connect it. Uh, so it's the computer with the device gateway. You can find USB driver on uh, your device manufacturer's website. Alternatively, you can use Android default USB uh, driver that can be downloaded from Google. In addition to this, uh, Android device must have USB debugging enabled. 
USB debugging option can be found on the developer's options. If you don't see developer's options on your phone, you should be able to enable it. Please search on the web how to do this on your phone's model. Okay, right now I'm going to plug in my Android phone. My computer recognizes connected device and uh, device gateway also detects that uh, new device is connected uh, through the USB. It provides information about the device in, the, in its log. You can see that uh, it's a model, Android version, serial number, and the uh, ZEP agent ha has been uploaded and started successfully on the Android device. Now, if I go to my ZEP farm, I can see Android phone in the list of devices. On the home page of the ZEP farm, you can see its icon. Also, if you go to the devices list, you will see the device appearing here. It has status, which tells that the phone is online. If you need to edit the device, you can go to the edit device page. From the Zep Farm homepage, you can navigate to the device. For this, you just need to click the device icon. After communicating with the device, the next screen shows list of installed applications. Also, you have buttons that you can use to get a screenshot of the device. If I press this button, display the device screenshot. This is what I can see on the device screen at this particular time. I can pull up device log, press this button, device log will be displayed. This log may be useful for debugging purpose to troubleshoot application installation, crashes, or other issues with your phone. Another button shows gateway log. This is the same log that you can see on the interface of your device gateway. This also can be useful if you run your device gateway on a separate computer, but you need to check uh, what appears on the gateway log. This button can be used to restart the mobile device and with this button you can install packages. Just need to press add package, specify location of the APK file for the Android package and run the installation. So you can remotely install applications on your Android device. From the list of installed application, you can still select any application that you want to control. Just click it in order to have it launched on the Android phone and access through the browser interface. Two buttons that appear on each application icon can be used to uninstall the package from the device or to launch Zep Viewer and control the device and application through the Zep Viewer. If I just press the application icon, it's going to launch on the Android device and show its interface on the browser window. I have full control of this. So this way we can use it to perform manual testing tasks on the mobile device. As a next step, I will connect my second device. This is iPad iOS device. To use an iOS device, you will need to have iTunes installed on the machine which you use for device gateway. 
I have iTunes already installed on my computer. So I'm going to physically plug the iPad. Let me go back to my device gateway to control messages here. Okay, my computer recognizes connected iPad. When you first connect your iOS device, you should watch its screen because it may ask you to trust the computer if connected for the first time. Also can be other messages asking for different type of permissions. Uh, the device gateway lock indicates that it recognizes the iOS device, provides it information, and I can go to to the Zep Farm interface, refresh this view, and now I have two devices, Android and iOS iPad. On the Devices page, I can also see two devices. For my iPad, when I click its icon, next screen will show a list of applications that can be controlled through, through Zep Farm. When you connect your iOS device for the first time, you will see no applications in this list because any application that you need to control needs to be installed through the ZEP test. I have two applications already installed, ZEP Browser and uh, ZEP Safari. Additional controls here allows me to view the screenshot of the screen. I can see what's on the screen. This feature again is useful for a remote connection when you don't have direct access to the iPad. And if there's trouble controlling it, you can look at its screen. It can be some system message that needs to be dismissed. Also, you can verify Wi-Fi connection and the level of battery charge. This button pulls device log there are two types of logs, device log and crash log. Yeah, it may take time to load the entire log based on its size. Anyway, this information can be used for uh, troubleshooting purposes. The gateway log shows the log of the device gateway. You can use this button to restart the iOS device and you can add certificate to store with the Zep farm by pressing this button. To control any installed application through the Zep farm interface, you just need to press the applications icon. The form communicates with the device, sends command to launch the application, and when it's up and running, it will display its interface. Of course, I have full control of this browser window. I can use this to navigate to our website on the iPad. So far, we have installed Zep Farm, we have installed Device Gateway connected to mobile devices. If you go to the Gateway step, you can see the Gateway with its status, ID, status, number of devices that have been connected. If you want to disable or delete Gateway, you can use this button. As the next part of our webinar, we'll discuss integration of Zep Farm with Zep Test. Let me open my Zep Test.
To establish connection from ZEP test to the ZEP farm, there are different ways. First way can be done through Environment Manager. When you launch the Environment Manager, it will show you a list of devices and generators. Right now you see two devices on the Local Devices section. Those my Android phone and the iPad, which I have uh, connected to use with the Zep Farm, because these devices are local to my computer, they automatically appear in the local devices list. In order to connect to the Zep Farm, I need to press this button. And to add new connection, I press this, the plus sign. And here I will need to specify the logical name of the Zep Farm connection its address and login information. Alternatively, I can go to the MRAM. Once again, that right now MRAM includes a list of two devices. Those are two local devices that are connected to my computer. To connect to the Zep Farm, I need to go to the settings menu, select Zep Farm configuration, Press the plus sign to add new connection and provide same information on this dialog. Also, you can use Farm tab of the ZEP test to connect and access ZEP Farm interface directly. If I go to the farm, ZEP test recognizes that local instance of ZEP Farm server exists and it asks me if I want to use it. This is because I have my Zep farm on the same machine. If I would have Zep farm on a different machine, I would need to provide its server and on the next screen, login information. For me, I just can press the yes button on this prompt. Zep test connects me to the Zep farm. And here I can see main page of a Zep farm. It's the same interface that I can access and view using the browser. From now on, I have connection established to the Zep farm. If I go back to the environment manager, I can see all the devices that part of a Zep farm. In the MRAM, once I refresh the view, I can also see all the devices. And it includes list of local devices and devices come from a Zep farm. Now, in order to control the devices, I need to connect to them. Again, there are two different ways. I can use Zep Viewer to connect to those devices, or I can use MRAM. For the Zip Viewer connection, I need to open Environment Manager, select device which I need to connect to, and press it. Once the Environment Manager connects to the device, right now I'm using connection to, the, to my Android phone, it will show a list of installed applications and include buttons to refresh the view, install package, install browser, restart the device, get the device log, get the device screenshot, and to control device from a system perspective. This feature available only for enterprise version of the test. Next step for me is to select which application I want to control and simply Double click its icon. Once the application is launched and connection is established, the application interface will appear in the Zep Viewer. The Zep Viewer dialog can be used for test automation. We can scan it, collect test objects, build our test, and run it against the mobile device using the Zep Viewer.
For an iOS device, steps are similar. I need to click the device button on the Environment Manager. The Environment Manager then will show a list of installed applications, those applications that can be controlled. If you need to install additional package, you can use the Install Package feature. Once you press this button, you can use this dialog to uh, specify the PA file. You will need to specify location of the provision and certificate file. If certificate includes password, you specify password here. Also, you can set this set of configuration of certificate and provision to be default. Once you press install, ZTest will install this package on your iOS device. I will not be installing this because it takes time and it's not part of the webinar presentation. I already have that application installed on my iPad. This button can be used to restart the device. This button can be used to pull device lock. Of course, you can check the screenshot of the device at this moment. Right now, I have browser with ZepTest homepage displayed on it. It can be expanded if needed. Control device is not supported for an RES because we can control only individual applications. Once I press the application icon, the connection to the iPad will be established, application launched, and I can use the ZView to control application on my device. As I said, MRAM can be used to connect to either device or both devices, and also can be used for parallel test execution. From the MRAN, I need to select which device I need to use. So I press device icon. This is my Android device. Similar environment manager screen shows new list of installed applications. If I use browser application, I have option to provide initial URL. I use slightly different URL this time. So when I type it and press the OK button, the MRAN will communicate with the device, provide this information, and my Chrome browser will be relaunched with the new URL. Once it's up and running, this interface will appear on the MRAN. To connect to the second device, again, I need to Click on its icon, so we'll use iPad. From the Environment Manager screen, I select which application I want to control. Once again, I want to use Zep Safari, and I will provide same URL for the browser. So this way I establish connection to two devices and I can use these two devices for parallel test execution. In the dashboard view I can see them on the same page. Using the MRAN we can create tests, we can use MRAN debug mode in the one script module to scan the pages collect test objects, use the objects to build our test script, and run test in parallel. Let me demonstrate a few steps. I establish connection to my Android phone. I can use this button to scan it.
Now I will use the objects to build simple test script. Let me go to the script view. In the mRUN debug mode, I can run my steps against the selected device. I can make any additional scans. If I need to perform debugging steps for my another device, I just need to select it from the list of devices in the mRUN debug mode. And now I can run same test against the iPad. And I can see that login step was successful on both devices. And from now I can use the mRUN for parallel executions. Just need to make sure I have connection established to both devices. Have these devices reset back to the home page. And I will run my test using the dashboard. Let me save this test first. So this is true parallel execution of the same test on to different devices. Execution pace may be different based on device performance. My iPad works slower than the Android device but they both made successful login. And in the test results, I can see information for my both devices. This is my Android with all related steps. And this is the iPad. Okay, this concludes main part of my presentation. Let's move on to the Q&A session. Again, if you have any questions, please submit them using private WebEx chat. I have received one question. 
How to limit device access for users? Thank you, very good question. Basically, the different ways. Let me go to my uh, Zep Farm interface. Uh, first of all, the users. Yeah, you can use this feature to uh, block user temporarily. So if you don't want your user to access uh, Zep Farm, you can block it. If you don't want users to use particular device, you can disable device on the devices page for this. Once you select your device, you can go to the edit mode and select a disabled option for your device. After that, device will not be accessible for any users. Okay, uh, I have another question. Is it possible to connect a mobile phone without using USB? Uh, thank you, very good question. It depends on device platform. Uh, iOS device has to be connected using USB because for iOS devices we uh, establish control of the particular application and this requires a uh, device to be identified through the iTunes and device must be connected using USB cable. For uh, Android device, we use uh, ADB, Android Debug Bridge, which uh, normally operates through USB. If you find a way to enable uh, ADB through Wi-Fi, then uh, it's possible probably will be possible to connect Android device without the USB using Wi-Fi. Uh, other type of devices uh, like uh, Windows Mobile, those can be uh, accessed through Wi-Fi network any problem because you can configure remote connectivity feature on, the, on that mobile device and then the device can be added through the devices. In this case, you need to use new device uh, feature to establish connection. This is manual way to connect to the device. Once you specify information for the device name, its mod model, platform, its IP address, optional username and password, then the device will be added uh, to the device list. Same procedure can be used to connect devices that run on Windows, Mac or uh, Linux platform. Only mobile devices like iOS or Android can be connected using uh, the device gateway. All other devices should be added manually. Of course, it's a subject of uh, your license. Right now, I'm using free license, like I said. This is the license type that I have. It allows two devices, two gateways, two connections. If you need to connect more devices, then you will have to contact uh, Zeptest for a specific license. And that license uh, will need to be applied here. You paste the uh, license key, press this button, and your license information will be updated, reflecting new information. Number of allowed devices, their types, also uh, gateways and connections. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming and we have reached the end of our webinar. Thank you everybody who joined. Thank you for using ZepTest. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to use our forum. Once you submit posts with your questions, we will be happy to assist you. Again, thank you very much for joining. Have a great day. Goodbye.